Our big news this morning, 20 SAISD campuses are closed for the day due to multiple repairs. That includes Herf, Hillcrest and Huppert Elementary, just to name a few. We have more of the schools closed posted on your screen and the full list is posted at ksat.com. Campus administration, custodial staff and child nutrition services will still report to these schools. Curbside meals for students will be available from noon to 1 p.m. This is all in response to several complaints about cold classroom conditions from parents and students yesterday. Some students at Madison Elementary told us what they thought about the cold. Welcome back from the holiday weekend. How was school today? Good. It was good, but very cold inside. Is it colder outside or inside? Inside. It was colder inside? Yes. Now, SAISD's letter to parents, uh, the superintendent said in part, quote, I regret that our preparations did not meet expectations. We will work around the clock to address these issues and we will be open on Wednesday. We will continue to monitor the situation, end quote. SAISD is not the only school district that reported having problems while adjusting to the cold. One was Oak Creek Elementary in Comal ISD. Now parents said that schools there had a heating issue. We went to the district and it said the following in part quote, the district's maintenance team has been working throughout the day and I found that that the issue was related to a faulty control panel, end quote. Now, East Central ISD got back to us as well, saying, quote, we've received recent concerns about temperature in some areas of the district. Our facilities team has investigated and confirmed that all systems are operating normally, end quote. Northside ISD also uh, that reads in part, quote, we had only a handful of issues across our 135 campuses. Stevens High School being one of those, all of the issues, including a burst coil at Holmes High School, were items that our maintenance crews were able to address very quickly. It's important to note the schools we spoke with all say they plan to be open this morning. Just to stay up to date, scan the QR code on your screen or head to ksat.com. We're keeping an eye on any changes. Well, the Hilson Avila Rodriguez Capital Murder Trial resumes later this morning. Yesterday, the prosecution laid out their case as they said this was a cold-blooded double murder and all the evidence led to Avilar Rodriguez being the sole suspect. Eric Hernandez takes us inside the courtroom with a look at what took place on day one of this trial. He went in there to burglarize them for what he suspected would be drugs and the proceeds of the sale of those drugs. He saw them both laying in bed, helpless, asleep, Bang, bang. Shot them both in the head with a nine millimeter fire. Prosecutor Raul Jordan gave a rundown to the jury about the murders of 23-year-old Nicholas Milanovic and 21-year-old Julia Wright, both allegedly killed by Hilson Avila Rodriguez on September 30th, 2018. Jordan said Avila Rodriguez lived at the same complex as the victims at the time with his girlfriend and later found evidence linking him to the scene, including 9mm ammunition matching casings at the scene. Meanwhile, the defense asking the jury to listen closely to all the facts in the case. We believe the evidence will show that these two folks were in the process of dealing drugs. And that someone who is also in that business wanted to silence them, wanted them to maybe shut down their operation. The first responding officers to the scene, the first to take the stand, saying when they arrived, they found Wright outside in a pool of blood and Milanovic inside his apartment. We saw lots of blood. Once we were actually on that level, we could see a male laying uh, face up on the bed. He was on the right side of the bed, and I could see uh, an injury to his face. It looked like he had been shot. The last witness to take the stand was Avila Rodriguez's girlfriend, who said she wasn't aware he had a gun, but then recalled her having a conversation to remove the gun from their apartment. Many details she couldn't remember or wasn't very willing to talk about it. She did say she was still in contact with Avila Rodriguez and even talked to him recently. Did you talk about the case? No, we try to keep it personal. I mean, he knows I still love him, but... We just can't be together. 
This is a non-death capital murder case, which means that Avila Rodriguez is only facing life without parole if he is found guilty. Now, testimony will continue later this morning around 930. You can watch it live on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus, and KSAT's YouTube channel. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Well, back to the weather this morning, record setting Arctic blast still being felt by more than 100 million Americans. The extreme conditions have turned deadly in the south, claiming at least six lives in Tennessee. At least three others were killed in weather related highway incidents, two in Jersey and one in Mississippi. Ice has been a major problem across the south with many cars left stranded on the side of the road. In Chicago, so-called Tesla graveyards have developed with owners saying they're having trouble charging the vehicles and what feels like 30 below temperatures. Two attorneys are trying to get more clarity when it comes to Texas's abortion laws. The state has some medical exceptions for the procedure, so the lawyers want the Texas Medical Board to define exactly what those are. Last month, the state Supreme Court rejected a woman's attempt to terminate her pregnancy, which was not viable. The Texas Medical Board is expected to have answers by the end of the week. Well, now to the race for the White House. Former President Trump launching new attacks against former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. ABC's Lionel Moyes explains what's next before the all-important New Hampshire primary. This morning, debate canceled. Thursday's GOP primary debate in New Hampshire scrapped after Nikki Haley pulled out, saying she'd only attend if former President Trump was also on stage. That's who I'm running against. There is nobody else I need to debate. I have had five strong debates and have done plenty of them. He can't hide forever. Trump, fresh off his landslide win in Iowa, now focusing his attacks on Haley, who's been surging in the polls in New Hampshire. Trump last night hitting Haley on taxes and Social Security. She's not tough enough. Nikki Haley supported a brutal 23 percent national sales tax, which is a disaster, by the way, why she did it. And that's why some people call her the Nikki new tax. I don't I don't think that's particularly good. Haley's campaign slamming Trump, depicting him as a bully and a liar. Meanwhile, Ron DeSantis, after his second place finish in Iowa, touted his record on tax cuts while speaking in New Hampshire last night. And I think what I represent is somebody that has delivered uh, on those key conservative policies. In the meantime, President Biden weighing in on the race. I'm still the only person to ever beat Donald Trump. And I'm looking forward to it again for the good of this country. Today, Trump is expected back in a New York courtroom for his defamation trial involving writer E. Jean Carroll. She is expected to take the stand. The jury is deciding whether damages should be awarded for comments Trump made about Carroll's sexual assault allegations. He was already found liable for sexually abusing her. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York.